After his time in Vietnam, Colonel Alexander became an intelligence officer and worked on classified studies of unidentified flying objects for the United States military. If anyone might know a little something about Kratzking that in while of what we normally perceive to be reality, Colonel Alexander would be the one, and his rather grim assessment of what was happening at the Skinwalker Ranch was that they were dealing with a trickster entity which was merely toying with them as it saw fit. It is interesting to note that this trickster motif, the idea that otherworldly entities come into our reality just to play pranks on us, can be found in ancient folklore all around the world. Look into the tales of Leprechauns and Loki, Elves and Anansi, and yes, the Navajo legend of the Skinwalker, and you will be inundated with accounts of a precognitive intelligence doing its best to get one over on mankind. If Colonel Alexander is right, perhaps the whole ordeal of Skinwalker Ranch was simply one big, long, drawn-out, gotcha. Let's examine some explanations that have been posited for what is really going on at Skinwalker Ranch. These explanations range from the prosaic, to the enigmatic and deceptive, to the fantastic, and to the even more fantastic. Here is a brief run-through of theories that have been proposed by experts and enthusiasts alike. Terry Sherman himself has long suspected that his former property was a secret military testing ground. He feels that users of advanced military technology, ranging from stealth aircraft to man-portable cloaking devices, were running amok on the ranch. And their behavior seemed to indicate that the residents and their psychological reactions to the phenomena were very much a part of the experiment. But could this be true? Could the military really be testing exotic cutting-edge technologies over the idyllic backdrop of a rural ranch? If this is the case, the testing has been going on for quite some time, perhaps since the 1930s. This does not quite account for the earlier legends of bipedal dogmen, but it does correspond with the unidentified flying object activity of more recent times. Interestingly, the 1930s was the decade when the Myers family first bought the farm. Now, the curious thing about the Myers is the fact that they never reported anything unusual during their many decades at the ranch. The Shermans, meanwhile, experienced odd behavior from the moment they moved in. For the more conspiracy-minded among us, this can lead to only one conclusion, the Myers were in on it. For those who believe that the ranch has been part of a massive military psyops program spanning several decades, it would seem plausible that the Myers family long ago signed on the dotted line to take part. But whether the Myers were in on the plot or not, the real question is why. What was the goal of all of these operations? Was it to test human reaction to advanced holographic displays and cutting-edge camouflage technology? If so, it would hardly be the first time that a remote region in the West was used for military testing. Just think of all the atomic bombs and covert military hardware tested in remote deserts in Nevada and New Mexico. Utah could work just as well as the desolate backdrop for such secretive military operations, much of it is far off the grid, with few potential witnesses around. It's the perfect place to test something out on just a few select individuals at a time, and the Skinwalker Ranch phenomena were certainly selective about when and where they decided to manifest. But even assuming that the Myers had agreed to be subjected to such testing when they built their first ranch house in the 1930s, the Shermans most certainly did not know or agree to any such arrangement. To continue such testing on the new residents without their consent would have been a severe violation of legal protocol. The only hint the Shermans were given before moving in that there might be some kind of military involvement with the property was when Garth Myers, who had inherited the ranch from the original owners, mysteriously advised Terry to avoid digging on the property. This directive would make sense if it was possible that excavations could uncover underground installations. The idea of military bases being buried underground in the vast expanse of the western United States is no conspiracy theory fantasy. During the Cold War, several bunker-type command centers were buried all over the West to prepare for nuclear war. Terry must have known of this possibility, but to think that such an underground base might be buried underneath the ranch was still unsettling. And it certainly didn't help matters that one of the very first of the wide range of odd phenomena was strange underground pounding sounds. 
These would be followed by the sounds of drilling and heavy machinery working feverishly right underneath the Sherman's feet at all hours of the day. Just who was performing these subterranean maneuvers? Did the Shermans and those who followed after them become the unwitting pawns in a series of clandestine military maneuvers? If you can accept the stranger skinwalker ranch phenomena, the portals, the balls of light, the walls of unusual size, as being the product of advanced holographs, or maybe even mental manipulation, then massive military psyops could indeed serve as a somewhat rational explanation. But then again, nothing is ever quite rational in regard to Skinwalker Ranch. The oldest explanation for strange happenings in the region of Utah where Skinwalker Ranch is located comes from the oldest residents of the region, the Native American tribes. In particular, the Ute and the Navajo have a long backstory as to just how the land of the Uinta Basin became cursed. You see, these two peoples were competitors and arch-rivals before Europeans ever set foot in the Americas. It is out of this friction and conflict that the law of the skinwalker originates in the oral histories of both tribes. These histories contend that the Navajos were finally defeated by the Utes and forced to leave their land in the Uinta Basin. According to the story, the Navajo knew they had to go, but they weren't going to leave without a parting gift to their enemies, a gift in the form of a curse. Supposedly, before the Navajo surrendered their land to the Utes, they placed a curse on it that brought forth the dreaded skinwalker and all of the frightful activity that came with it. The traditional belief systems of many Native American tribes place much emphasis on blessings and curses carried out by mystical shamans. Terry Sherman himself once came upon the recent remains of what appeared to be a Native American tribal ritual on the grounds of Skinwalker Ranch. He wasn't sure who had snuck onto his property to perform it, but it certainly had all the hallmarks of a traditional religious ceremony. Were local tribespeople sneaking onto the ranch to fend off the curse, or were they adding to it? Belief in the power of curses is still strong among the locals, and so is the belief in skinwalkers. But despite all of the attempts to link the activity at the ranch to Native American law, there is one aspect of the story that just doesn't fit. The skinwalker of Navajo legend is a brutal, ruthless fiend who wouldn't hesitate to strike a person dead. But as far as we know, the phenomena on Skinwalker Ranch have never killed a single human being. The activity has claimed the lives of plenty of animals, including Terry's beloved pets, but even though the presence at the ranch has melted dogs and mutilated cattle, it has stayed its hand when it comes to physically harming humanity. People have felt ill effects such as headaches and nosebleeds, and as was the case with the Sherman family, sometimes strange marks would appear on their bodies. However, no mortal harm has come to any man, woman, or child. This restraint goes against the traditional portrayal of a bloodthirsty skinwalker. Nevertheless, the legend of the curse still persists, and as has often been said, the curse is as strong as those who believe it. After nearly a decade of studying the elusive activity on the ranch, the NIDS group more or less came to the consensus that they were dealing with an unknown form of consciousness, some sort of massive collective consciousness whose senses could monitor the entire ranch 24 hours a day. Indeed, as much as they tried to observe the paranormal manifestations, this collective consciousness seemed to be much better equipped to observe the researchers themselves. Whatever inhabited the ranch was always at least two steps ahead of the NIDS crew, anticipating their actions before they made them. The Shermans had often felt that the presence was actively eavesdropping on them, and this belief was apparently confirmed when the intelligence reacted to an off-hand remark Gwen had made. She had briefly mentioned to Terry her fear of something bad happening to her prized new bulls. Immediately afterward, Terry went outside and was shocked to find that those very bulls were nowhere to be seen. Their frantic search for the animals would conclude with one of the most infamous incidents that occurred during their time at the ranch. They ultimately found their missing bulls, but the condition in which they found them defied explanation. The animals were discovered impossibly lined up and neatly placed into a lock trailer. Not only that they were staring off into space as if they were somehow switched off and in a complete trance, 
oblivious to the world around them. The very second the astonished Terry Sherman opened the trailer, the balls came to life as if someone had just hit the play button to bring these freeze-frame creatures back to reality. The idea of a sentient precognitive intelligence eventually became the prevailing theory among the NIDS researchers. Their findings pointed to the conclusion that an unknown intelligence which could predict events was attempting to interact with people in a variety of ways. In particular, this unknown form of consciousness often tried to produce very specific emotive responses from those it manipulated. Sometimes it did this in subtle ways, through trickery, and at other times it employed more direct means. The more direct approach was experienced early on by Terry and Gwen after one of the shining blue probe-like orbs confronted them. Terry believes that the probe somehow tapped into his mind and deliberately instilled fear into him and his wife. They were instantly filled with terror and dread, as if someone had flipped a switch. Trespasser Ryan Skinner had a similar experience later on when one of these probes hovered over him and sent instantaneous shock waves of fear coursing through his body. This was not fear that came from him, but fear that seemed to have been unnaturally injected into him from the outside. An unknown intelligence playing games and manipulating our emotions. According to the official findings of NIDS, as strange as it all may sound, that's the most likely explanation. Whether general public wants to accept it or not, most modern physicists firmly believe that we are part of a multiverse with several slightly similar yet different parallel universes bumping up against our own. The nuts and bolts of quantum mechanics is a bit too much to get into here, but just know that these experts agree that our very reality is most likely separated from a multitude of other potential realities by merely a thin membrane of dark matter. If this theory is correct, is it possible that some advanced species from the universe next door has found a way to punch through that thin barrier of separation? Is Kinwalker Ranch a place where the thin membrane that separates universes has been successfully traversed? According to eyewitness testimony from both shamans and then IDS researchers, random portals have appeared above the landscape on several occasions, and UFOs and strange creatures crossed through them. And they we are not the first to witness such things in the region. Local Native American lore has long described the appearance of doorways to other worlds. It is an integral and accepted part of their belief system, perhaps we could learn to accept it too. Among UFO buffs, the most popular explanation for the happenings at Skinwalker Ranch is, of course, an extraterrestrial incursion. Although many aspects of the skinwalker phenomena differ from the typical extraterrestrial narrative, Dachard believers have come up with a variety of explanations for these discrepancies. Some suggest that the aliens are conducting psychological experiments on those who wander onto the ranch just like the military PSYOPS explanation, except it has an alien military behind it. Other extraterrestrial believers take a simpler approach, postulating that extraterrestrials are behind a large part of the activity at the ranch, but not all of it. They argue that there is indeed something unusual about Skinwalker Ranch, so unusual that extraterrestrials are drawn to it for their own research purposes, thereby compounding the oddity of the location even further. The Shermans witnessed a wide variety of strange craft hovering over the ranch, and Terry observed some that seemed to scan the grounds of the property as if they were looking for something. When even saw one of the occupants of such a craft, a strange-looking man decked out in some sort of uniform, or flight suit, sitting at a desk. Perhaps these extraterrestrials are scientists, who are just exploring a strange feature of our planet. The probes that seem to monitor the ranch could also be hypothesized as being extraterrestrial in origin. Are these the robotic scouts of alien explorers? Artificially intelligent drones sent by extraterrestrials to gather data on the Earth and its inhabitants? Most scientists do believe that the first contact with an extraterrestrial civilization would probably be with one of its far-flung autonomous explorers. But other than a few blurry photos, so far there is no concrete evidence to support this theory. It has been postulated for some time that perhaps there is something at the Skinwalker Ranch, in the environment itself, perhaps, that affects the minds of residents and visitors alike. Perhaps intense magnetic fields, or some other naturally occurring phenomenon, 
could be creating mental mirages and hallucinations. This could explain a wide array of events, and also explain why these events cannot be captured on camera, because they exist only in someone's fevered mind. But this explanation falls short on many fronts. The fact that multiple people have witnessed the same events, at the same time pretty much rules out individual hallucinations. Also, the phenomena have had very real physical ramifications, consider the Shermans, incinerated dogs, the mutilated cattle, and the destruction of the cameras. This seems to prove that, as crazy as the activity on the ranch may be, it's most likely not all in our heads.